This video illustrates the use of IGW to perform coupled surface water groundwater modeling. A watershed with the lake is modeled. The lake's water level is determined by performing a simple mass balance of the lake, accounting for all of the lake's sources and sinks. In this example, the only source and sink for the lake are groundwater influx and outflux, as this lake is a flow-through lake. The coupled transient model is run until steady state is reached, that is, until the lake's water level stabilizes. Multiple computational layers are also used in this example to illustrate the vertical groundwater dynamics around the lake. The steps to create the model are as follows. 1. A pre-made polygon defines the aquifer extent. There is a lake polygon in the top left portion of the model domain. Create a second polygon near the center of the model domain. Edit the newly created polygon in Attributes Explorer. In the Source and Sinks tab, check two-way head dependent flux and assign a constant stage and constant bottom elevation and use the default leakance value. This, the stage value that is entered is used as the starting lake level, which is then updated when solving the coupled models. Check the From Coupled SW GW Modeling box to enable coupled modeling and open the Surface Water Dynamics window. QSW represents direct additions or subtractions of water to the lake via an external source such as the outflow from a pumping well used in a lake augmentation project. In this example, we assign a value of zero to QSW, and thus no external source of water to the lake. Two, draw a cross-section through the lake that was just created. Edit the cross-section in Attributes Explorer. The options that can be changed are the number of nodes along the cross-section, in both the direction of the cross-section and in the vertical direction, the horizontal and vertical grid spacing, the cross-section thickness, and the vertical exaggeration factor, which is by default set to the square root of kx over kz. Uncheck the assignment of the default vertical exaggeration in input 10. 3. Discretize the model. Note the windows that appear. One is the cross-section model view, while the other is a profile chart that tracks key parameters, such as head along the cross-section. Four, open simulation time parameters and select a transient state model. Use the time step of 100 days. 5. Click on the Numerical Solver Settings icon in the Icon Toolbar. In the window that opens, go to the Flow tab and ensure that the explicit scheme is selected under Surface Water Modeling Numerical Scheme. 6. Still within the Flow tab of Solver Settings, check the box next to Lakes and Coupling Control. This allows lake levels to be updated by and used as feedback for the groundwater heads in the aquifer. 7. Run the model forward. Note the surface water window that appears, displaying the lake level as a function of time, as well as the terms in the lake mass balance. Eight, continue running the model until the lake levels are no longer changing. That is, the lake level is at steady state. The steady state lake stage is reported in the surface water window, as well as the net groundwater flux into or out of the lake. Nine, right click within the cross section model window and select draw options. Click on the velocity options. Change the options so that a velocity vector is shown at every four grid points in the horizontal and vertical direction. 10. Click on the deep discretization icon and add four computational layers to the conceptual layer. 11. Run the model and note that the velocity vectors show upwelling of groundwater into one portion of the lake while the other part of the lake is losing water to the aquifer. Eventually, the steady state solution is reached.